Sound design can be the difference between an okay travel video and a great one. Is it difficult to set up? Not really. Let's see how to do it and resolve. Okay, so let's go through how to create a sound design for a travel video. Now, we've got the Puerto Rico uh, video that I put together here uh, that we're going to use an, as an example. Now, I've removed a few edits just so that I can use it as we go through it uh, for teaching purposes. So a couple things here. You've got your tracks here. Uh, your video tracks are at the top. Your audio tracks are at the bottom. And the first thing you want to do is create all the crap, uh, tracks that you want for your sound. Now it's best to group them. Um, in my case, I've got the music, the background, sound effects one and two, because in certain cases I've got more than one sound effect going at once. And then I've also got the dialogue where I've got people talking. So I, I split these all up and just right click here, added a track, and then selected stereo for each one of these, okay? So all you wanna do is, is double click here and then you can type in the name of the soundtrack. The other thing that I like to do is actually color code it because it helps me keep track of what's what. So in this case, I left the soundtrack or the music track just the base um, default color. And then for the background, sound effects, and so forth, I, I went ahead and right clicked here and then changed the track color um, and then uh, selected it accordingly. Okay, so that's all I typically like to do here is to drop in all of my clips my sound effect clips. I actually like to drop them in here and then I typically do all the other detail edits on the Fairlight page. So let's go to Fairlight right now. Okay, so this looks really complicated, uh, but we're going to kind of simplify a few things here. The tracks are laid out just the same as on the edit page, with the exception being there's no video tracks. Okay, now you can actually enable the video track if you come in here and click on uh, the video you can actually see it and sometimes that's helpful to line it up but in my case I prefer to do that on the edit page and then come in here and just fine-tune it okay so first let me talk about the layout of uh, Fairlight uh, some of the most important things you need to keep in mind here is is the track um, dial so M is for mute so if you want to actually turn off the entire track you click this and you can see that it's uh, gonna mute the entire track S is for solo, and that's going to be a very helpful tool that we're going to use. So we're going to talk more about that here in a minute. And then R is usually for record uh, when you're recording something like a track or audio over it. And we'll, we're not going to cover that today. So the other thing is this shows you the, the levels for that particular track. And then over here in the mixer, uh, this is where detail is a store. So in the input, you can select different inputs in case you're uh, recording something. Effects. We're going to show you how to do uh, like noise reduction across the entire uh, track. Um, Dynamics gets into some advanced features with compressions and so forth. Equalization across the entire track. And then pan, obviously you can select um, how you want the, the music to come or the sound to come out, whether it's right, left, front, back. Uh, this gets into um, surround sound and so forth. So we're going to focus in here on the music. So I'm going to play the music. I'm going to solo out that track and notice what happens as I play that. I'm going to play that right in here. What I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to dim this out. So a couple of things we're going to note here. The individual lines are the peak values and then the, the solid bars are the average values. Okay? So for sound, the main soundtrack uh, typically, you know, that's going to be the loudest, and we're going to just go from there. Um, but as we get into other things such as the background and the sound effects and the dialogue, there's different ranges that we want to put those in so that, at least as a starting point, that way everything kind of uh, sounds realistic. So uh, we're going to actually go in here and we're going to solo out this dialogue track here. I've got a fade in and I actually adjusted this keyframe so that it's got a slope to the fade in. We're gonna go ahead and play this. Notice here the, the levels. The levels, right now, the peaks are right about minus 10 and the, the average is here in the yellow range, 10 to 15 or so. That will usually uh, be a good starting place, if not an ending place for your dialogue. 
So that looks good there. The way that we adjust this, now if I go to the next one, you're going to notice that it's a little lower. Rico, after taking a See how much hit, lower it is? Hurricane Maria slamming That's too low. So what we're going to do here is select it, and we could do two things here. I can just simply raise this line, or I can undo that and go into Inspector, and I can do the same thing here. If I can adjust it here, I'm going to adjust it very close to the line here that you see for the other one. Okay, so now if I turn, if I play it back, Rico, after taking a direct hit, you see Maria slamming that the, the peak and is right there around 10, and the, in the range, the destroyed. average range, is in the yellow 10 to 15. So that looks good. So that's for the dialogue. Let's go now to the background. Now the background, you typically want even lower than the dialogue. Okay, so you typically want that in the green range, so that would be below minus 15. Now, depending on how you're using that background um, noise or music or whatever, will depend on your story and so forth. So in my case, I'm going to target um, to have this somewhere in the uh, very close to minus 15. I'm thinking between minus 15 and 20, but let's just play it and see how it it, it sounds. I'm just going to solo that track out. A lot of the shots are taken in the, the market or the, the old town area. And so uh, we really just wanted to bring that ambiance into the, uh, the scene. Uh, so I'm actually going to play it once by itself, which may look very odd, but then I'm going to add it with the soundtrack. And you'll see uh, kind of you know how it works. Okay, so now let's play it, but add the soundtrack. I'm going to dim this, that way it's not too loud. Okay, so that sounded pretty good, maybe a little loud, but I'm going to leave it there for now but for illustrative purposes. But you see what I mean. Uh, you could just simply adjust this. Again, you could adjust the volume as you see fit. I've already dialed it down a little bit. Um, but I think as this kind of flows, especially as the music gets louder, it will actually be less noticeable. So I'm going to leave that there. Um, now, there is a section here. I'm going to actually zoom in here. Let's uh, adjust this here. There is a section in the video, so if I adjust right here, where I've got this drone image, and it doesn't make sense to have that, that ambiance in at that point. Okay, so during the drone image, I actually went in and put some keyframes in to actually eliminate it. Okay, so if, you, if, you, if I play it here, you don't hear it at all. What, you, what I did here was just put in some keyframes. And the way you do that is you press Alt and then you left click or just normal click and it will create a keyframe. So I put two in and then you just simply adjust it to the level that you want and just put it on both ends. So um, I'm going to remove those since I've explained how to do that. But that's all I did to this. Okay, so now let's let's turn off Inspector so that I can see the entire um, uh, timeline. There's a key here, Shift Z, which will zoom out so that you can see the entire uh, timeline. And you can press it again to to go back to your pre previous position. So now what I want to do is one of the nice things about Fairlight is you can very quickly spot sounds that only have a single channel. So for instance, this sound right here is only left channel. It's not in the left and right, as you can see. And this is pretty common with certain sound effects you get online or even, believe it or not, uh, certain cell phone uh, recordings that you may have. So the easy way to fix this is just to go right-click on it, clip, clip Attributes, go in here under Audio, select Change it to the format to Stereo, and all you have to do is duplicate it um, across the two channels. So embed Channel 1 across... Uh, right just as it is in left and then all of a sudden bingo uh, you've got that um, duplicated across uh, both 
uh, right and left channels. That way you don't have it just on one side. If you're listening to it in, with headphones, you can hear it in just one ear or something like that. Okay, so that's a good catch. You can't see that on the edit uh, tab, so that's very helpful to do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to uh, shift Z. I want to go and look at this. All right, so we're going to... Um, I'm going to adjust the EQ of this track. Okay, so this is actually this bell here. And what I want to do is I'm going to loop it and then adjust the volume as well as the... I'm going to solo this with the music, I think. Oh, let's, let's turn off dim. And let's just do the bell by itself first. So what I'm going to do here is set up a, a loop. So I'm going to select the range here, and I'm going to highlight it just like that. All right. I'm going to adjust this so that it covers the entire uh, sound effect. And I'm going to select loop here. And then all we have to do is press key Alt. Actually, we're going to go up here. All I have to do is press to loop it, or play. I'm sorry, play around the loop is Alt plus a slash. Okay. All right. So while that is looping, actually, I'm going to dim it uh, just so that I can talk over. You can see very quickly that that's way too loud for a sound effect. And as we mentioned earlier, we typically want background sound effects to be in the um, uh, in the green range. So I'm going to dial that down so that it's just in that range. Just below, maybe just hitting 15. So I kind of want it pretty loud. Okay. So let's see how that sounds now. Okay, so that's a good starting point. Now let's see how it sounds when we add the, the soundtrack back in. Let's see if it's loud enough. If I dim it, now I can talk over that. You notice you can't hear it at all because the track is pretty loud at that point. So what we're going to do is go ahead and dial this back up. A little bit lower. All right. A little, a little more subtle. Yeah, I think that's right about where we want it. Okay, so... I think you get the point. You start with the range for background and sound effects, usually below 15, and you adjust from there based on uh, what you know what else you have going on. If we didn't have a loud soundtrack as we have here, uh, you know the initial range was probably okay. But this is a good way to do that. You loop it and then you go accordingly. Now the other thing I want to talk about is the equalization. So in this case, you'll notice that I have decreased. So if I Let's just go to another clip so you can see what the default looks like. Okay, so this is what it would typically look like. So pretty uh, a typical response where we we uh, we dial it off at the lower frequencies and the, and the higher frequencies, and in, in the middle, it's the gain is at zero. And so you can see the difference here, where I've added a boost, slight boost in the the lower um, mid-range as well as the mid-range and then everything else is pretty much the same. So I did that because of the bell sound. So all you have to do is move these numbers. So if it was here initially, you just needed to move those. And as you're playing the loop, like I'll do real quick, let's go ahead and do Alt slash, okay? You just you listen very closely as you're playing that so that you can kind of dial that in. And so this is where I ended up with um, for that. Okay, so that's a very handy tool. This loop function is, is worth its weight in gold um, because you're really able to fine tune your audio uh, by just doing that. The last thing we're going to go to, so let me first turn off the inspector and then I'm going to clear out this range here. If you go into... Uh, mark and you do clear in and out it will remove those points and what we want to do now is to go into noise reduction so we'll pull in some of these effects here that's uh, in the default for Fairlight uh, some of the most common ones that we use is noise reduction and D Hummer so typically if you've got say one clip on a track or similar clips on a track you may want to apply this to the entire track. 
Uh, so I'm just going to show, for example, let's say we've got a humming issue on our main track. So all we have to do is drag that here, uh, and then it will put this on the track. And in the case of this being in the United States, you use 60 hertz, 50 hertz if it's in uh, Europe. Uh, and then usually default is pretty good. You can adjust the volume based on how, you know, how it's affecting the levels because as you can see here as you play it it's going to try to tune down uh, some of the lower frequencies and that could impact your soundtrack so you may want to minimize that or limit that um, and it also gives you the ability to kind of just listen to the hum only and so forth so um, that's how you would add it to the entire track so as you notice here the dehummer is actually showing up here in the effects because it's over the entire track Okay, so you can actually go in here and you can adjust it, or you can go in here and just click this uh, drop down and, and delete the plugin. Okay, so let's go to this bell here. Let's say that we wanted to uh, add some noise reduction because there's some you know outside noise and we weren't able to use the EQ to eliminate it. So what you can do here is just drag this noise reduction right here. And then if we were to play that back, so I'm going to go ahead and actually do my loop again. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and loop this. All right. That's pretty good. All right. So now what I want to do is I'm going to, I've got it on dim, and I'm going to uh, play it back. And while it's looping, you'll see this is the actual sound effect here. And then this, this hard... A purple line is where it's it's uh, reducing the gain of that frequency and that, that's what the default setting so all you have to do actually let me uh, let me remove the soundtrack so that we can just focus in here on the bell is you can now just see the the bell and how it's adjusting that so you can adjust uh, the level the output or if you want to listen to the noise only so the key thing you want to do is typically adjust the dry and the wet as well as the level until you fine tune uh, the effect so that you're removing just the noise uh, but without uh, too much of the actual sound effect or the music or whatever you have. Okay. So for each one of those, obviously it takes some trial and error, but usually the default is pretty close. Uh, that's it. Um, really just those are some of the key basics to keep in mind. I think most people typically have just used the edit tab to edit their sound effects or their, their music and tracks, but maybe you start there and then you kind of finish it out in Fairlight. It will make your job so much easier, but more importantly, it will make your travel video sound so much better. So if you've got any questions, please leave a comment below. Otherwise, if you really like this video, please uh, click the like button. And if you want to hear more or see more tutorials, uh, feel free to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.